Vidal, we at the University of the Arts London, and in particular London College of Fashion, are absolutely delighted that you have so generously accepted the award of an honorary doctorate from the University of the Arts London. Obviously, you are renowned for having revolutionised the way that women's hair and hairstyling has been viewed across the world. And I think, you know, why did that happen? What was it about you that enabled that revolution to take place? My mother. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> she took me into uh, Adolf Cohen in Whitechapel Road for an apprenticeship. Of course, at first, it was all the, pr the pretty girls that were fascinating me, not the hair. Mm. And it was very much later that I got into the whole s essence of design. Mm. What do you think you could see that others couldn't? I was very lucky to be working with Mary Quant. Actually, since 1957, she came in for a haircut and I did something I'd never done before. I nipped her ear and the blood was pouring. <laughs> but um, we worked together ever since. Mm. I'd see all her shows and we'd do the hair. Really, you have to go back not just to hair and fashion, but in uh, 57 mm. there was a development in all forms mm. of expression. Mm. And there was a reason for this. I mean, Britain had gone through a terrible war, as had many countries, and uh, there was all that pent-up energy. Mm. An energy which I guess used to go to the empire, which we don't have anymore. Mm. You know, yes, suddenly yes. came yeah. out. Yes. People came to London in their droves. Anyone with talent would be here. And you'd find yourself working at an echelon that was fascinating. I wanted to do shapes, I wanted to cut angles. Mm -hmm. Because cutting is shaping, it's making shapes. And if you can't use your scissors, you can't make shapes. What do you think your one piece of advice would be for today's graduates? Oh, what, would you, what would you say would be important? Well, if you are adventurous, you have to be. Um, I remember a client coming in wanting a big quiff and a DA. <laughs> yeah. You remember those? Yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> and I said, I don't do that kind of work. She said, you'll do it. That's what I want. I said, madam, we'll get you a taxi downstairs and we'll send you a pl to a place who will do it. You couldn't compromise. Don't compromise. Learn. Don't be big-headed. I mean, uh, Mons Montan said it beautifully, the French philosopher. No matter how high the throne you're sitting on, you're still sitting on your own behind. <laughs> And that's yes. it. If once you become big-headed, you'll lose it. You've always got to be slightly unsure, <coughs> confident, but slightly unsure, because in six months' time, you've got to do another collection. And uh, it's not the easiest way in the world to make a living. Some people go through life doing exactly the same thing. But in fashion, mm -hmm. that's the excitement it of fashion, yeah. the constant change. And... Uh, I think it's a wonderful art form. And you're the person who has really made that happen. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Uh, Vidal, I'd now like to formally present you with the honorary doctorate, the certificate from the university. I feel ve very honoured. Thank you. Well, we are very honoured. Thank you. I'd like very much to congratulate those who have got a degree from the London College of Fashion. And I realize the hard work that you put into it and the vitality, inspiration, and sweat. It takes all those things and the hours. You can either play and go to parties or you can work and become one of the best. So I wish you all the, the joy of being in fashion and doing what you do very well indeed. Thank you.